Yes. Welcome to our open forum on strengthening the IGF. The German community invites to a discussion with uh, notably a perspective on the IGF 2019 that will be held, as you all know, in uh, Berlin from 25 to 29th of November uh, next year. Um, thank you very much for coming, all of you. Um, this is um, the aim or the, the perspective of this open forum is to present a little bit what we have been thinking, uh, what, is our, what, are our, what are our perspectives um, to uh, inject into the international com IGF community and then, um, of course, with the MAG, with the UN structures to uh, shape next year's IGF. Um, we are very honored and um, we are very um, proud that we uh, have been accepted as host country and um, we see this as a, um, uh, an, an, an intercessional process that it is not only a one time event in November but something that will go on for uh, one year starting with um, Wednesday evening or Thursday morning this week and then until uh, next year's uh, IGF meeting. So there will be a lot of um, intercessional activities, plans, projects um, from the German IGF community that we want to present to you here and um, not only from the German but also the international uh, IGF community. And we are very happy and eager to hear from you. Um, what are your thoughts? What is your input? And um, what are your perspectives so that we could uh, build together um, with the MAG, with the UN structures, a good um, IGF year, I would say, um, uh, 2019, um, that has many um, important um, events on its way, um, also in the UN um, structures. And my colleague, uh, Wolfram von Heinitz, uh, will um, explain about those now. And um, I welcome you again and um, all the best for this nice hour of perspectives. Yeah, also a very warm welcome from me. My name is Wolfram von Heinitz and I'm the head of the cyber coordination, policy coordination stuff in the Federal Foreign Ministry. Oh, warum spreche ich eigentlich Englisch im Deutschen Forum? Zu lange hier. Okay, I, I think I continue in English. Everybody understands English? Okay, some understand some, so I speak in English. So very warm welcome from me. Um, the big item yesterday was the speech of Mark Fron, of course, and we work closely with our French partners, counterparts, to coordinate some of the items President Macron also mentioned. That's, of course, this line from Geneva, IGF, through here Paris IGF to IGF 2019 in Germany, uh, but also on the Paris call. There we, of course, uh, support this initiative very much from the German government side. And also other details like the artificial intelligence strategy. We will come out with a German artificial intelligence strategy very soon. And that has strong elements of coordination and close cooperation uh, with our French counterparts, not only with our French counterparts, but in particular with our French counterparts. Um, it is clear in artificial intelligence, probably more clear than in other areas of technology, that only through cooperation over borders you can basically achieve results and deliver results. Uh, other elements of the speech were quite new and quite ambitious. Uh, there we have to look into detail. My understanding is that the text has not been published yet, so we have to look into detail that we will that. A lot of interesting ideas, but the devil is in the detail. You have to look how to implement it and what is doable. How difficult that is, we also see in another format in the UN GGE process, the group of government experts which uh, worked on voluntary non-guiding guidelines for state behavior in cyberspace and delivered quite impressive results in 2013, 2015. The last group of government experts, GGE, 
unfortunately failed to deliver these results, and we just concluded the process of establishing a new group of government experts. We are, and this is just for your information here, uh, we're not too happy with the result. We have basically two, we had two competing resolutions, one sponsored mainly by the US, the other supported by the EU countries, the other one supported by Russia. So we now have two groups, one time-limited traditional group of government experts with a limited membership, and the other one an open-ended format, which is longer, and we have to see how that will work. It's an interesting new development. We will, of course, engage in these groups or try to engage as much as possible and positively, but it will be hard work. So that's just an example how difficult it is to implement even the formation of a group. We're not even talking about the content, what the groups finally achieve. So uh, that's for the GGE. Other formats in Germany upcoming, we have the uh, Freedom Online Coalition, a uh, yearly conference in Berlin at the end of this month, 28th, 29th, 20, 30th of November. Uh, that's a very interesting event because we also want to focus there on developing new ideas for freedom online and we want to link in particular this format, this coalition with other formats, in particular with the high-level panel on uh, digital cooperation, which the UN Secretary General uh, uh, set into place and which is chaired by Melinda Gates and Jack May, May, Ma, <laughs> whatever the Chinese pronunciation is, I think it's Ma. <laughs> anyway, and uh, we also want to connect this format with the uh, IGF, we have Lynn Santa Moore here, so she will be in a panel with Jovan Kobaya, who is the, basically the executive director of the uh, high level panel. So that's an, one of the discussions we will have at the Freedom Online conference. And of course, Freedom Online is under pressure. We have to be aware to, to deliver more, and we can only do that with multi stakeholder approach. We have now an advisory next network also in the Freedom Online uh, Coalition, which is a new development which we didn't have before, and that has a major impact on this year's conference, so it will be a slightly different format than the previous conferences because it's jointly uh, prepared by this advisory network and the chair and the friends of the chair and the support unit, of course. So much for me, for me now, and I hope we have a fruitful discussion now. Yeah, thank you very much. And as a first speaker, I would like to call uh, Daniela Bronstrup from the German Ministry of uh, Economic Affairs and Energy to present the plans of the German government. Thank you very much, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues. When we discuss how we could strengthen the IGF, I think it's important to ask how we can make it more relevant. And this includes that the IGF should not only identify, discuss, and find solutions, that's what it already does with the multi-stakeholder approach, but the IGF should also raise more awareness, awareness among the broader public. This is also part of its mandate, and I believe this is something we should do work more on. In order to achieve this, we have, in my view, to raise the level of representation of certain groups. We really have to include in our discussions all relevant stakeholders and all regions of the world. What I'm talking about, I think it's uh, clear that the Global South is still underrepresented and for the IGF 2019 in Germany, we are going to make money available to the United Nations to help representatives of the Global South to travel and uh, to cover the expenses of travel and accommodation. And I'm also thinking, secondly, of the business community and high-level representatives of governments. Therefore, we are planning to have also a high-level segment next year, like it was the case here in France and also last year in Switzerland. I'm convinced when the hosts of the IGF attach a high level of importance to the forum, so will those attending as well. 
And if we have high-level representatives, I'm sure we will have a higher media coverage, and then by that way, um, we will reach a broader public. But this is also something we need to be prepared for in advance. We need to prepare the content, the grouping and the shape of the discussions that hopefully will arise then also in the broader, broader public. What we also do as the host country, we are asking our businesses, especially our SMEs, you probably know that Germany is an economy that is very much structured by small and medium-sized companies. And we ask ourselves, and I ask you, what we can do better to involve also them. Finally, we put a particular, particular focus on the cooperation with parliaments. And I'm glad and honored that we have a delegation of the German parliament and also of the European parliament here. Thank you for coming. We would like to continue that very good practice next year in Berlin. Ladies and gentlemen, we are, we are proud and delighted that the IGF will be taking place in Berlin next November. The German federal government has applied to host the Internet Governance Forum because we deeply believe in the IGF and the multi-stakeholder approach. And we want to get the forum more awareness and a broader public attention. In the run-up to the IGF 2019, the Federal Ministry of Economic Affairs will be holding a series of events, like the Internet and Jurisdiction Conference in Berlin next June. We are in close cooperation with Mission Publique, and of course, especially with the National German IGF, which is a very strong partner for us. I very much hope to see many of you next year in Berlin. I invite you all very much, together with the MAG, of course. We are very proud to be the host next year. And um, hopefully we will do that together in the sense to maintain the stability and the innovative power of the Internet. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I would now like to ask uh, Lorena Palazzi, the coordinator of the German IGF, to give us her view on next year's IGF. Thank you very much. Um, hello, everybody. Um, the German IGF is uh, the constituency in Germany that is uh, truly mixed up with a very type, very different, several types of uh, stakeholder groups. We feel very lucky that we achieved in the course of the last two day, two years, to involve not only um, the private sector, the technical community, science, the scientific community. Um, and uh, the civil society as well as the youth as the next generation um, uh, to make sure that um, new generations are coming into the audience, bringing fresh air into uh, the internet governance process. Uh, but we are also feel very happy and very proud to also have um, high level uh, members of the both government and of the parliament. Um, and with this, we slightly differentiate ourselves as a local IGF uh, from the typical multi-stakeholder categorization. Um, and that shows the richness of a local IGF, which means that you have your own particularities, your new um, groups that you identify as a specific stakeholder group related to your culture. And um, for us, it was a big step to have both uh, the government and the parliamentarians in our constituency on equal footing, discussing with us on equal footing about the agenda, um, about uh, the structures that we have, and we hope very much that this is a good example and a, a practice with its, uh, of course, its, its, its learnings, its failures, and um, but also with um, with good bet best practices that might help or inspire other <coughs> communities um, within the NRI community. We have a huge NRI community, over 80 um, groups uh, doing similar um, constituencies all across the world. And um, we, we hope that uh, the next conference in Berlin 2019 
keeps being a place where all the high-level groups uh, and uh, members taking uh, part in uh, the IGF um, are open to all other um, multi all other stakeholder groups on equal footing, so that we together can achieve um, better improvement. Because we prove that there's the possibility to have different stakeholder groups working together towards output that is meaningful, and it is meaningful because it's inclusive. Um, so we're really looking much forward, and we're very thankful to the government that they are putting money aside to make sure that also the Global South is involved, that we have diversity, not only with respect to uh, gender and age, but also with respect to um, regionality, um, but also uh, with regards to different types of um, stakeholder groups interacting with each other, which I think is crucial. Um, and uh, as the German IGF, we are very much looking forward to start our work reaching out to the wider, very rich community that we have in Berlin and all across Germany. There are very different hubs in Berlin doing um, economic um, innovation, but also um, very rich political NGOs operating in Germany, both in German or in other languages. Um, Germany has become an international place for also advocacy groups. and. Um, of course, a very rich and wide scientific community working on all things digital and automatization. And um, we uh, are also very happy to the German government that gave, gave us uh, a bit of space here to present um, also the work we're doing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I have now on my list Professor Kleinwächter, um, member of the scientific community and also very active member of the German IGF. Thank you very much. Um, you know, uh, if I go back to the history, then we see IGF as a process. And this process went through various phases, uh, both globally and nationally. And I will use this moment to speak a little bit about uh, the uh, uh, IGF on the, on, the, on the national level. Lorena has already introduced, you know, the general framework and the uh, way how we organize it. Um, but I think, you know, the, um, one of the key things which have evolved from the national and the regional IGFs is that we were from the very early day oriented towards more outcome, practical outcome. I, I was in the week again in the Tunis uh, conference where the mandate of the IGF was framed and it was very clear that the majority of the governments didn't want to have a negotiation body where they produced concrete recommendations. So the, the basic idea was uh, uh, this is a place for discussions. Decisions should be made elsewhere. So, and what I've learned over the years is that um, it's extremely important to have the discussions because you have to have the input from all different sides. One and the same issue is seen in a different way by a governmental representative, by a business person, a civil society activist, or a technical expert. So the, the wisdom of all this together creates then what we could say is the, the common knowledge. But what you do with this common knowledge, if you have reached in the discussion a certain level, and how you can deliver this uh, outcome from the discussion to the places where decisions are made. And you know, in my personal opinion, being involved for nearly 20 years in this, I have discovered a missing link between discussion and decision. So what we need probably is something like a distribution me mechanism between discussion and decision. So this would be the third D, you know, this discussion we have already developed in the IGF, but I think it's the general feeling that, um, you know, discussion has to lead to, to something. And nobody wants to uh, give, uh, extend the mandate for the IGF that the IGF becomes a negotiation body where you have to, uh, uh, you know, long debates about language and commas and paragraphs. So this makes no sense. But you know, the idea now that the IGF produces messages or has adopted this idea from the national and the regional forum and moves forward with 
IGF messages is the next very good step and then what you do with the messages. So, and I think this could be discussed also then in Berlin in the next IGF, whether we need a certain you know, mechanism or some forms where the messages will be sent to the bodies where decisions are made. Uh, so that you can guarantee that the outcome of the discussions in the IGF will go to the various um, intergovernmental or non-governmental organizations which have a mandate to decide, and then they should report back what happened with the discussion. So that means to bridge this gap between discussion and decision by a distribution mechanism could be the next step on the long road to enhance and improve the IGF and to make it more stable and more relevant. Because if at the end, you know, you contribute the decisions, then, you know, a lot of stakeholders, what Madame Benstrop has said, you know, from the private sector and also from governments will realize, oh, that's the place where you have to go because you have to be involved in the early beginning via discussions, you reach a certain level and then it goes to the decision making, but decision making is not for the IGF. I want to be very clear here, this would be the wrong path, but somebody's decide and they should make decisions in the light of the discussions uh, in the IGF. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, next speaker is um, Professor Rothart, also from the German IGF community, the business community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I mean, I don't want to refer too much to the history like uh, um, Wolfgang Kleinwächter did because I don't have his history. Um, but um, when it started with the, uh, with the IGF many years ago and then uh, I saw the whole picture when uh, national IGFs uh, came up and the European view uh, with Eurodic came uh, <clears throat> into effect uh, some ten years ago. Um, and uh, in, in Berlin, <clears throat> already the uh, 2014, the Eurodic uh, was, ho uh, was in the premises of the Foreign Affair Office uh, hosted and was a very big success. And we from the business community, we believe with all the development we currently see at the horizon, with the messages especially, uh, which are very important for the, for the business community to to have some takeaways at home to justify um, uh, on one side and to make it interesting, of course, uh, uh, for the businesses. And um, what we have seen uh, from, from the business community, that is, it, it started to be a debate club and it's now going to be, in, in the past few years, going to, to be more and more interesting also for the business world um, as many developments uh, uh, could be influenced on one side or on a compromise side uh, to see what, uh, uh, what's going on. The, uh, in Germany, the uh, uh, business community uh, is uh, very much uh, a provider community so far, but we see that many um, within the business community, m m many uh, businesses from outside the tr traditional internet business are now coming up because uh, the internet or the appropriate uh, things are everywhere. We started uh, and we want to support the whole process for Berlin uh, uh, 2019, uh, of course, and we started with a uh, compendium um, uh, for, for eth uh, with an ethics uh, compendium. Uh, that's the draft name, and for uh, and we will see, especially for, for or of course for digitization, and we would we want to expand this on one side, but there are many other things which have to be done and. What we would like to see are not only projects which start now and end once it is Berlin, but projects which are going beyond the IGF 2019 on a long run and with a long run effect. I think this is necessary 
in, in the fast moving internet businesses business um, to have the uh, brighter view um, in, uh, into the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, and um, now I'm very much honored to have um, amongst us Lynn Santa Moore, the chair of the MAG, um, and also my chair because I'm a member of the MAG, um, C and CEO and president of Internet Matters. Um, Lynn, the floor is yours. Thank you, Rudolf. Um, I'm very happy to be here um, and very thankful to the German government for stepping up and stepping up so early to host IGF 2019. We haven't had that luxury for the last several years, so this is a, a tremendous difference. Um, we're also very um, pleased that the UN Secretary General uh, announced the MAG and the MAG chair for next year as well yesterday. Um, the last few years that hasn't happened until March which uh, puts us in rather a, a constrained timetable for so we have everything working for us this year in terms of really you know as Neaton decides said there's only successful meetings or very successful meetings um, we have everything going for us to make this an extremely successful meeting um, I'm you know, particularly pleased about the um, additional support funds you're going to make available for those from developing countries in the global south. Um, we're very fortunate to have had the support of so many European countries the last two years and um, this coming year. Um, we, at the same time, we need to make sure that we're all, every one of us, doing everything we can to bring in um, all the other parts of the world. So just very, very appreciative of, of your prioritizing that and, and bringing that in. Um, I also very much like the focus on increasing the outreach to the private sector and government and senior policymakers. That's something that the MAG and the IGF community has asked for for several years now. I think we've made some inroads, um, and I think we also still have a, a long way to go. So I really look forward to working, um, working with you, whether that's through some um, high-level ministerial efforts. I mean, as I said um, yesterday, in the early days of the IGF, we actually did have a full-day ministerial and this is, you know, roughly right, but the first few years, um, in my recollection, it was mostly closed to governments and ministers. And then some experts were invited in or some observers in, in a, a few later years. And then, um, frankly, it started to, I think, look and feel to a lot of governments in particular like just another workshop session. So I think one of the things, you know, we've said um, in the MAG is that we need to determine how we can more um, usefully work with governments, useful for everybody, certainly for governments, but for all the other stakeholders as well. So I think that'll be one of the first things that I'm hopeful the MAG will take up, which is some real kind of concrete activities with respect to how can we um, better engage, better support, better um, deepen our relationship with, with governments and policymakers. And uh, the same thing for the private sector as well, where, frankly, in many instances, there's just as much policy being set through private sector activity as there is through um, government-led activity. If you're an individual and you look at what impact that has on your day-to-day -day activities. Um, and just um, briefly, I mean, I like uh, Wolfgang's, um, you know, comment with respect to trying to move from kind of discussion to decision. Um, we're very much aligned in the fact that the decisions obviously belong in different bodies, different places, nation level, uh, region level. Um, I do think there's a whole host of things we could do in between to um, take the very rich work that exists in the IGF and make it more accessible. Um, and that means uh, not just uh, more concrete, not just more tangible outputs, um, but much easier to find on the IGF website, much more accessible in, in a sort of reachable um, way. So I think there's a lot of work we can, we can do there. And we're, again, very pleased to be at this point in time with the host for IGF 2019 and with the MAG um, established so that we actually have a, a full year and a full runway. And I really look forward to working with you as I know the, um, the MAG does as well. Thank you. Thank you so much and we are also very much looking forward to this, to this um, joint undertaking and work. So we will now have um, three presentations um, of this kind of intersessional activities that I have been talking at the beginning. And I will start with um, 
Dr. Jörg Schweiger, he's um, CEO of DENIC and he will present the internet governance radar that he is developing or they are developing. So, <clears throat> hello everyone. Um, thanks again for the opportunity to speak. Uh, a couple of words uh, about DENIC before I start. We are an entirely private company, yet we are managing the German namespace.de on the internet. And one of our indispensable um, mission statements is that we do want to champion an open, free, and secure internet. And as the internet becomes so important to all of us, I think we need to foster an informed community to govern the internet of today and tomorrow. And this is exactly the end where we built the internet governance radar to. So to easily gather comprehensive information, to update information, and to facilitate informed participation for an informed, <coughs> facilitate informed participation in internet governance. So for example, on our way to uh, the IGF in Berlin in 2019. Now, What does the uh, internet governance radar really look like? Well, we're taking a look at internet governance from um, two different perspectives. One is topics. So those topics are being distilled into different baskets like cybersecurity, like uh, digital economy, like, well, you never want to present with a computer that is not yours. <laughs> uh, technology or, or human rights on one hand, and on the other side, we are focusing on institutions and their remit in internet governance. So one thing we do is we give a complete overview of all the different institutions that are currently being involved with internet governance. So we can browse the whole list through. So you see there's all institutions that are ever being involved with internet governance like Freedom Online Coalition, G20, G7, and all of those. So it's a very comprehensive list. Okay. But not only that, we are not only providing the institutions that are currently being involved with internet governance, what we do as well is we give some more information about what they are really actually doing, how they are involved in internet governance discussions. So for, for example, over here, just uh, the European Union and what the European Union is doing about internet governance. More than that, we, uh, we try to differentiate between state actors, non-state actors, and multi-stakeholder institutions, all color-coded like you probably already recognized. And this is gonna be filterable and selectable in the forthcoming future. So now that you see we provide a list of all the institutions that are currently been involved in, in internet governance. That is probably just the basic part. What probably is even more interesting is that we provide an overview of what is currently going on in internet governance. So for each and every of those institutions you saw prior, there are quarterly reports on the current discussions and the current outcome of these discussions. So once again, for example, we even provide some input about the just recently formed UN high level panel on digital cooperation. So we can dig into these and find out what uh, the UN high, panel, high level panel on digital cooperation is currently been doing. 
So basically what we're trying to do is provide you with a comprehensive picture of where discussions started and where they currently are. Well, and for, for the uh, fast readers under, under us, there's also some Uh, executive summaries, we even provide you with internet governance calendars of events so you can browse through different events where internet governance is focal point. And by that I just want to uh, stop with that presentation not without saying that is something that is currently being built so the whole uh, handling of the of this site is still under development but nevertheless I would uh, appreciate if uh, you would like to give me any feedback I'll be available uh, after the session on the floor and uh, hopefully this is gonna uh, feed into internet governance and more knowledge about internet governance um, if you do not happen to to meet me over here just drop me a line at ig-radar.dini.de thank you thank you very much for this very um interesting presentation. Um, next speaker on our list is uh, Paul Fehlinger from Internet and Jurisdiction Net Policy Network and um, he will present the ongoing work on the Internet and Jurisdiction Network and uh, what it has to do with um, the Berlin event events in 2019. Absolutely. Thank you very much, meine Damen und Herren. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Paul Fenninger. I'm the um, Deputy Director of the Secretariat of the Internet and Jurisdiction Policy Network. And we are incredibly delighted um, that Germany, the government of the Federal Republic of Germany, is um, the partner country for the third global conference of the Internet and Jurisdiction Policy Network that will take place on June 3 to 5, uh, 2019 in Berlin, Germany. Um, so on those days, um, over almost 300 um, senior level key actors, um, representatives from governments, internet companies, technical operators, civil society, academia and international organizations engaged in the Internet and Jurisdiction Policy Network will meet at this third global conference in Berlin. Um, this global conference is also next to the partnership with the government of Germany, um, institutionally supported by a number of international um, organizations. I'm very grateful for the institutional support of UNESCO, where we are here today. In addition, um, there's also the OECD, European Commission, Council of Europe, um, ICANN, and the United Nations Commission um, for Latin America and the Caribbean. Um, for those of you who don't know what the Internet and Jurisdiction Policy Network is, it is a multi-stakeholder organization that was created in 2012 that addresses the cross-border nature of the Internet uh, and national jurisdictions and tries to enable multi-stakeholder cooperation between the different actors to develop policy standards and operational solutions. Germany, the government, is joining a coalition of leading governments um, that care about the future of the cross-border nature of the Internet and care about finding solutions, concrete solutions, to those very pressing challenges of, in the digital 21st century. Um, the previous um, partners were France were, um, and um, Canada, and so the second global conference of the Internet and Jurisdiction Policy Network took place in February of this year in Ottawa. Um, the stakeholders there adopted the so-called Ottawa Roadmap that for the first time um, was the moment where the different stakeholders set themselves after seven years of discussions in the Internet and Jurisdiction Policy Network. Um, a concrete common objective, what they want to achieve together, and a list of structuring elements that form work plans for each of our three programs, data and jurisdiction, content and jurisdiction, and domains and jurisdiction. They deal with very concrete challenges. Data and jurisdiction deals with the challenge of cross-border access to e-evidence. Content and jurisdiction deals with cross-border requests for content restrictions. And domains and jurisdiction deals with cross-border requests for content, uh, for domain suspensions. So as a result of the um, Ottawa Roadmap um, and fulfilling the mandate of the Ottawa Roadmap, there are right now three multi-stakeholder contact groups in the Internet and Jurisdiction Policy Network that correspond to those three programs. Um, so there are around 120 um, experts from all five continents 
and over 12 working groups, um, because each of the three contact groups has sub-working groups, that continuously work in regular interactions, virtually and also through physical meetings um, later in the process at the beginning of next year, to try, based on the Ottawa Roadmap, um, to come up with proposals for policy standards and operational solutions. And these proposals will be released to the public in April of this year, and they will be discussed in Berlin. And we really hope, as the Secretariat, that by Berlin there can be consensus on some of the proposals that come forward, so that there is something that can also feed in the Internet Governance Forum that um, Germany is hosting in November of next year. Um, and in addition, I also want to announce that um, we are going, there was a very strong call in Ottawa for more policy coherence. Um, the issue of jurisdiction on the Internet is a very complex field, and there are a lot of ongoing initiatives in the different policy fields, digital economy, human rights, cybersecurity, that can be very often uncoordinated, and it becomes increasingly difficult to keep track of all the trends around the world to have an informed discussion on those solutions to those very pressing problems. And so on the occasion of the third global conference in Berlin, um, the Internet and Jurisdiction Policy Network is also going to launch the world's first global status report on the state of jurisdiction on the Internet, which will, for the first time will provide a consistent mapping of all the different actors and trends and initiatives around the world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this um, presentation. And last but not least, um, on my list there is uh, Yves Mathieu. He's the co-director of Mission Publique. And uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I have the pleasure to, to talk with you with, about an initiative that will feed the uh, next IGF and that is supported by the German government. And I express you my thanks for your support. Um, let me explain to you the, the context of this initiative. In the recent uh, Paris Peace Forum that was opened by President Macron, uh, Chancellor Merkel, and uh, UN General Secretary Guterres, uh, one question has been put on the table of the global community is what evolution is it necessary to bring to the glo global governance for the benefit of, of the 8 billion people living on the planet? And um, on the table of the Paris Peace Forum, there are many options to improve the governance of the planet. And one option on which there is a, a very converging agreement is that there is an urgent need to reduce the gap between citizens and the decision makers. And there is an urgent, gap, uh, an, uh, an urgent need to include the expertise of the non-experts in the decision-making process. And Internet became a common good in the last 20 years that is at the service of 50% uh, of the population and the 50% the that are not connected yet also benefit from the Internet. And so the issue of the governance of the Internet might be a wonderful topic to apply these principles of the new governance that is uh, on the table of the, of the nations. So our proposition to you as member of the community of stakeholders of the Internet governance is to experiment together what it means to take decisions to have discussions together inside the community of stakeholders when we include the expertise of non-experts. So what does it mean if in the tables of the IGF, or around the table of the IGF, we have seats reserved for ordinary citizens? And this is what we propose to experiment through a global citizens debate. We know for many years now that the inclusions of the expertise of non-experts, what we call the day-to-day -day citizens, can be very successful at the level of local communities, can be very su successful at the level of nations. It has been experiments on the five continents for years now. And uh, it is rarely experimented. It has been rarely experimented on the level of the whole world. And this is what we propose to you. So the idea is to organize on 100 countries a citizens debate engaging conversation with ordinary citizens on the future of the governance of the internet. That means that in September 2019, before the IGF, in 100 countries, ordinary citizens 
representing the diversity of their country, half men, half women, from 18 or 16 years old to 85 or 90 years old, will meet in a room for a full day, and they will discuss in their own language during a full day about their vision of what should be the governance of the Internet. And this will be replicated in 100 countries, and it will be exactly uh, the same protocol everywhere. So that means that the results will be relevant country per country, they will be relevant groups per country per groups of country, and they will be also relevant at the level of the planet. And in the IGF-19, we will bring the result of this dialogue with tens of thousands of ordinary citizens about their vision of the future of Internet, and we will invite you, as member of the stakeholders community of the governance of Internet, to enrich your discussion with the expertise of an expert. So our line of um, action is to say that every expert in this room are relevant to talk about the future of the Internet, but there is a necessity to include in the expertise the non-experts and the day-to-day -day citizens. And we are going to launch, with the support of the German governments in the coming weeks, pilots in five continents to start this conversation, and the global scale will happen in September. So I finish with my call to you as member of the stakeholders committee. So I'm here with my colleague Antoine. Uh, and if you are interested by this process before the IGF-19, if you want to join the advisory board that we are going to establish to create this uh, uh, dialogue with ordinary citizens, please come and contact us. And we do hope that during the IGF-19, the voice of ordinary, ordinary citizens will be present in each of your discussions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and thank you to all those who have intervened up to now. Uh, we have 10 minutes left for discussion, question and answers, so the floor is open. If there is anybody who has ideas, suggestions, questions, remarks, would be more than happy to uh, get into a little discussion here. Please. Thank you, Chair. My name is Walter Natris. I would like to share a small experience of this week. Last Monday, there were several <coughs> occasions going on in Paris, which directly led to all sorts of policy people and politicians to run out of my session at the very last days before the session. In other words, that they followed their leaders to the peace conference going on. So if the high level meetings are going on in parallel with sessions, they will hurt the sessions. That's a personal lesson. The other one is that I think that the, the higher level people involved could actually learn from being brought in contact with higher level people in other stakeholder communities, so the technical community, to explain exactly what they're doing and what the relevance is on decision making for politicians and, and, and policy makers. Just to give an example, and I think that is something very much worthwhile the, the, to discover whether that could work in 2019. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, please. Good afternoon, Vladimir Adunovic from Diplo Foundation. I apologize for, for sitting behind you, so no, it was no, quite, okay. quite hard to see. Uh, a quick um, reflection, basically, on uh, was what, uh, what uh, Ms. Bernstrup uh, mentioned at the, at the beginning, and I'm very thankful to hear that Germany is, uh, is willing to support uh, the participation of developing countries. That is something that has been missing heavily in the past years, apart from ISOC and ICANN and maybe a couple of other partners with limited uh, resources. Uh, in previous years, maybe five years ago, there was a much bigger fund, uh, also by Canada and many others, to support the participation of, of uh, developing countries, and that's, that's a really important move, and I thank you for that. Now, one thing is that when we think about bringing developing countries in the past, there was a limited um, uh, amount of funding for people from the government or representatives of the government, because it is considered that they can afford themselves to come here. But in many cases, that we show, as we see these days as well, many of the governments do not have funds to bring people here from developing countries, also because they don't see the priority here. So please account also bringing the government representatives as well. Now, a more important component of that is that the experience that Diplo has in the previous, like, from the beginning of the IGF 2006, 
is that bringing people per se might not be enough. We need, and uh, I'm linking basically to what you mentioned as the role of the IGF as awareness and capacity building. So the experience that we had a couple of years ago when we have more comprehensive programs was actually coupling capacity building activities with fellowships. That means using throughout the year to organize a number of online programs, in situ programs, blended learning for governments, private sector, civil society from developing countries to have enough time for them to understand and develop their own positions and meaningfully participate at the IGF. And in that sense, what I suggest is that you consider to actually couple a sort of a capacity building program together with a fellowship program. One good feature of that is that once you have a capacity building program, you can actually filter naturally the good of valuable participants you want to support to meaningfully contribute to the IGF. Uh, and uh, linking to what Professor Rotet also said, it's quite important to think long term in that direction, uh, that we think what's coming after the Berlin process or Berlin IGF, and how can we support the continuation of this, this uh, support to developing countries, including the capacity building. And the last quick comment was actually one reflection from these days. Uh, being in MAG a couple of years ago, we have fought seriously for remote participation. It's worse than ever. It's seriously worse than ever. It doesn't work. Remote participation has always been put up, but mainly as a buzzword. It is a serious effort, it's not a technical tool. It's a serious effort to prepare re remote participation and it's heavily important for, for the outreach, for the participation across the world to have a functional remote participation. I'm sure Germany will, will dominate in that one. Thank you. Thank you. Bitte schön. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm Kenta Motsuki, a Japanese business sector MAG member, and I would like to take this opportunity to thank Germany uh, to de uh, for deciding to host the IGF in 2019. As everyone here knows, uh, Japan will host G20 next year, and uh, there will hopefully be many outcomes in relation to various internet related public policy issues. Uh, from this perspective, we see the IGF Berlin 2019 is um, especially important, um, and we would like to showcase various G20 outcomes there. Um, so we very much looking forward to working closely with you and all German stakeholders to hold a successful IGF in 2019. And we try to do our best to contribute to you in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, hello. Uh, I'm a member in the uh, Asia Pacific uh, Regional Internet Governance Forum and from Germany. And uh, I've been to all IGFs since Tunis and I I think the diversity of participation uh, is decreasing a bit. <coughs> uh, so I was wondering whether we could have a look at the countries that are not here, uh, and um, not only from Asia, but also um, the Middle East and some other Africa, and look at now this, the IGF takes place the third time in Europe. I, I wonder if this is a good uh, message to the world. So just, just a comment, yeah. I think it is not the case that there has not been huge efforts in trying to find other host countries. Um, Lynn? No, then thank you for the question and, and thank you, Rudolf. Um, in fact, we've had um, Berlin on the agenda for some years, it wasn't announced publicly, but it was a, a really high expression of interest. We had to um, default back, which isn't as positive a word as it should be, to a UN premise in Switzerland for last year's IGF because we didn't have any other host country. Um, this year, we were in serious danger of not having a host country, having had eight, nine, you know, seriously good leads in the previous years that for one reason or another all um, didn't come through. We're very, very happy that France stepped up. I, mean, I approached France in February, and by April they had taken the decision, and it's not a small undertaking. And it's not actually a lot financially, but it's the, the organization. We're, we're not a normal conference structure. We actually need governments to step up and volunteer to host an IGF. If you do not have an IGF and a UN premise, the country actually has to agree to see its, see its territory to the United Nations for the duration of the event. It's a, it's a serious negotiation and a serious commitment. 
So we would very, very, very much love, as much as we love Europe, and I spent 26 years living here, we would very much love um, to um, have future IGFs um, in other regions. So 2020 and, and um, beyond is open, and we're hoping to close on, on quite a number of them quite quickly. So um, if we want IGFs in other regions, we need countries to step up saying it very, very directly. Thank you. I think we have perhaps time for one more question, if there is any. If not, we are right on time. Thank you all very much for participating. Um, looking forward to working with all of you on the way to the IGF 2019 in Germany. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. And I want to invite all of you tomorrow at 6 o'clock on the seventh floor to a reception hosted by uh, Germany. Um, which will be directly after the closing session and will be the first um, event in the coming up 2019 year un until 25th, 29th of November IGF. Thank you very much.